Hi everyone and welcome back in. Well, that little introduction, that's kind of my way of softening the landing of this crash landing here because what we're going to do now is we're going to suspend all belief and we're going to dive into, let's, let's just call it a very interesting project. Let me, let me explain. These reference photographs show German planes shot down over England during the Battle of Britain. And those actions were dramatized in the movies The One That Got Away and The Battle of Britain, which I put together as that little introduction at the beginning of this episode. And that is the basic premise for this project, that an aircraft has crash-landed, shot down, whatever, in England, 1940. But here's the twist. And this is where we have to suspend our realism and just have fun with this project. The aircraft is going to be a Warhammer 40K. This is the Wave Serpent. So this will be the aircraft. No explanation as to why there's some futuristic aircraft in the middle of this 1940s crash scene. We're just going to let our imaginations run wild, suspend belief, and have a good time. Well, opening the box, let me first say I don't have a lot of experience with Warhammer. So this is one of my first, well, I think this is my first Warhammer kit. So first thing that strikes me is, well, there's not a lot of parts, relatively speaking, which is a good thing. It means we can get right to it. Second are the instructions. It's got some really fun concept art here. I love this type of concept art, so maybe that will become a reference. And then the instructions themselves. And, well, we've got a total of three steps. Wow, this is, this is fun. Along with the spacecraft, of course, we need to have our townsfolk who are going to be rushing out to the scene. And I'm not exactly sure how this is going to all come together, but taking the pilot prisoner or inspecting the aircraft, something like that. We'll get to that once we move down the line here a little bit. As near as I can tell, the Warhammer world runs someplace. They live someplace in the 148th, 150th scale, I think. Someplace in there, if I did my research correctly. These figures, they come from MK35, the French company. And these are one. 43rd scale, so we're close to the same range. After all, we're making this up as we go along. It's all about fantasy, so we don't have to worry about exact scales. Plus, what's really nice about these figures, they come in all shapes and sizes, so we have quite the eclectic townspeople here. Looking at the parts, I think one of the first things that I noticed is that these parts are a little bit soft. They just don't have quite the finesse and detail that maybe we're used to from our 135th scale models. But that's okay because that just allows us some room to do a little bit of detailing. So I'll start off here with the, the weapons or some of the weapons, these laser guns or I'm not even sure what they are. And I'm going to drill out the gun barrels because why not? That's what we do in our everyday modeling. Of course, you could probably guess the next thing that happens. Once you get kind of started down this road of detailing, well, one thing leads to another, and that's certainly the case here. There are some features on the gun that have these little coil springs, and I rather than trying to clean them up, and they're fairly like I said, undefined. I take a little bit of wire and kneel it with the flame and then just rewrap those sections just to give it a little bit more detail and finesse. Pretty soon I'm just adding all sorts of little things here and there. I drill out a few holes, I've bent a little bit of wire and I'm just putting these little rods along the sides of the barrels. And I don't know, it looks, it gives it a little bit of a steampunk look, which I'm pretty much digging. I like that idea. I know if you're a 40K purist, I'm probably making you sweat right now because I'm going off the rails. As mentioned earlier, a lot of the details on this are a little on the soft side, and especially when we start getting towards painting, I want to make sure that there's surface details that will lend themselves to some interesting opportunities to, you know, show some wear and tear and, and interesting paint ideas. This really isn't kit bashing per se. I'm not doing a lot of reconstruction or adding a lot, but what I am doing is I'm taking some bits and bobs, little photo etch extra pieces that I have accumulated over time, and just adding small panels here and there, some grating here and there, just anything just to give a little bit more definition to the surface of the model. My guess is that when everything gets said and done at the end of this, unless you are very familiar with this particular Warhammer model, that many of these details you will not even notice. They, will, they are just going to be part of the overall presentation, and that's really what this is all about. Of course, along with the photo etch, we can use other scratch building or kit bashing ideas and a little bit of evergreen rod becomes 
some sort of a conduit. A little, again, another little surface feature, something that can be picked out with the paint. This is such a fun process because literally just letting your imagination run wild, just looking for opportunities here and there just to add a little bit of personality, a little bit of finesse, a little bit of extra, like I said, bits and bobs here and there, just anything to make it a little bit more interesting and a little bit busier looking. There are no wrong answers when you do this type of work. It's just all about creativity, imagination, and having fun. The large intakes at the sides of the aircraft here, I guess they're intakes, these just screamed out for a little bit of extra attention. Some scrap of brass mesh to the rescue here, and those, these I'll just cut to shape. I'm using the Sharpie just to kind of make sure I have the general shape and the outline, and then the mesh is cut out with a pair of scissors, a little bit of CA glue around the edges, and then it's just a matter of tapping these down into place. And I think this is one of those enhancements, again, that you won't really notice one way or another, but it's gonna make, make the aircraft sparkle just a little bit more. Moving to the upper parts of the body here, we're just going to, again, just look for any place here and there just to add a few things. And so I've got a little bit of wire that I've bent to shape. Again, this will be some sort of a conduit. This is being glued down with just a little bit of CA glue. This little, I don't know what it is, a little bump on the, on the top and turned it into, I guess you would call it a machine gun, a little bit of brass tube just stuck in there, just drilled out the hole. Again, a little bit of wire to be adding as another conduit. It's all about making it look busy and just a little bit more, I don't know. I, I kind of go back to that steampunk thing. This is not steampunk, don't get me wrong there, but it's just adding a few details here and there that just kind of give it a little bit of life and lived in look. And this is where I make that public service announcement. Just save all your old photo etch because you just never know when it's gonna come in handy. This is one of those points where you could just keep going and going and going, just depends on how much you wanna add on to this. I think I'm at a pretty good spot right now. I don't, like I said, I don't want to go overboard with this. I don't want to change it too much. I'm not doing a real kit bash, but I think all these little extra details, like I said, under paint are really going to make this model just that much more interesting to look at. Just a short pause here. If you like this video and you like this channel and you haven't done so already, please hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help this channel get out to more and more viewers. And of course, if you'd like to support this channel even further, I do have a Patreon page. The link for that is in the descriptions below. And don't be offended by this guy with a pitchfork. He's not coming after you. He's just a friendly persuasion. Patreon members enjoy early viewing of these videos. I talk about these projects as they're ongoing. We talked about this one a few weeks, about a month ago, actually. I have photographs of the projects as they're ongoing, special service videos from time to time on various techniques. And we also have a Discord server where we have some lively chats. So please check it out and consider joining Patreon. One of the molded in or built in features with this kit is that half the body of the pilot figure is molded into the cockpit seat. And I want to be able to do something different with the pilot. So I chipped him out, the pilot, um, half of his legs and such. And then I'm just using a little bit of magic sculpt to re sculpt the pilot seat in here. I have no idea what spaceship seats look like, but we'll just give them something nice and soft to sit on. And because this is sort of like an airplane or aircraft, yep, we got to do a little bit of masking on the canopy. And God, how I love this kind of work. Just kidding. But I have done a few aircraft, and I know that sometimes the canopies need to be treated and glossed up a little bit. In the old days, I used a little bit of future, but I don't have any future. So I do have this gauzy liquid. I guess that's how you say it. Got it through AK just to dip in the liquid and to set it on some paper towels, allow it to wick off and dry. And then the canopy becomes very, very bright and transparent and glimmers just like real glass. As you might expect, since there are very few parts, it doesn't take very long to get to the painting here. I began by giving all the parts a primer using Mr. Surfacer 1200 from the spray can and then followed that with German Gray also from the spray can. This German Gray color is gonna be the base layer to all of our chipping. And so I allow that to dry for about, I don't know, maybe two hours, which is a long time in my world. Then that's followed with a little bit of, well, two passes of chipping fluid. And then after that dries, after say about 20 minutes, I apply real colors, light gray. And this will become the base color for the entire spaceship. This is actually gonna be a multi-layer chipping process. So I've got the dark gray, I've got a layer of chipping fluid. I'm now adding the light gray color, the overall base color, but then I also want to add another color which I want to be able to chip both down to the white and down to the black. So over the white, another layer of chipping fluid. 
when I started to conceive of this project, and yes, I know it's all just fantasy, but part of the part of my thinking process was how would this vehicle be painted? Would it be say in Luftwaffe World War II colors, or would it be more towards what we consider space and alien ship colors? I guess I was just drawn to being able to do something that has some brighter colors because. You know, we're o I'm always doing grays and browns and tans, so using oranges and whites, well, that's a treat. I also feel that by using these quote-unquote traditional spacecraft type colors and using those in the context of 1940s era English countryside with these town folk just hovering around it, without really people necessarily thinking it's out of place or out of context, just kind of adds to the whole absurd idea and the folly of this entire scene. I want to take care of a few details here before I get too much further. So the cockpit where we sculpted that new pilot's seat, the lounge chair, just add a little bit of dark paint in here just to more or less make it go away. No fancy detail painting needed here. Okay, so let's start engaging with those chipping fluids. Process is the same as always. Dampen or moisten the surface with a little bit of water. A little bit of scrubbing, you can start activating and getting some of those chips to apply. But I also want to add some more directional and, I guess, uh, defined chips. So a little bit of work with the toothpick just allows me to really get close into some of these panel lines and add a little bit of directional chipping by just scraping across the surface. I also wanted to show a little bit of abrasion. So those are a different type of a chip and a little bit of a light sanding, just the lightest touch. With 220 sandpaper achieves that. And then in other areas, because I just get kind of tired and lazy, just the tip of my tweezers. Very much the same idea as using the toothpick, just to add a little bit of directional chipping. Unfortunately, this pretty much brings us to as far as I've got so far. You're caught up with me. We're going to start to call this one a wrap. In the next episode, we'll do a lot of the weathering. Actually, I think we'll get take care of all the weathering, weathering on the spacecraft. And of course, I've got all these little figures, and we'll dive into those and do some painting on those. And maybe we'll start to lay out the diorama. We'll see how that goes. So until next time, please hit that like and subscribe. Consider joining Patreon. Take care, everybody. Happy modeling, and we'll see you in the next one.